Francis, and you are listening to Lead to Break. Welcome to episode number 11 of Lead to Greatness, where we believe in helping others reach their greatest potential, and together we can change the world. Today on Lead to Greatness, we will be conversating about leading through COVID-19. If this is your first time joining the Lead to Greatness community, I want you to subscribe wherever you're listening and watching. Also, if this content is helpful to you, Please leave a review, like it, uh, leave a comment, and help get the word out. Also, be looking for content every Thursday. I am so excited on today. Joining me, uh, my co-host, my wife, Shante. <laughs> How's it going? It's going great, babe. Leading through COVID-19 on today. Everyone is actually a leader. Right, right. Uh, whether you're leading your family, family. whether you're leading yes. a team, yeah. Whether you're leading yourself, yourself. whether mm-hmm. you're leading a business, whether the you're kids. leading a ministry, leading the community. I mean, that's different. That's all kinds of ways to lead. If anything, you're leading yourself because at the end of the day, you're making a decision for yourself every that's day. Right. So we all are leaders. As a matter of fact, some of us, I mean, you have a cat or dog or a fish in a fish tank. I mean, you're leading somebody. <laughs> so so we, we all are leaders. We, we just want to, you know, sort of uh, be encouragement on today. Right, right, right. This is, you know, we're going to get through this. All right, all right. So today we're going to do a little different. I'm going to ask you some questions today because okay. you, you've you been, uh, you're a leader. You lead uh, two nonprofit organizations, a ministry, a church, New Direction Community to Church in Houston, Texas. You are also the leader of Meet the Streets, the president of Meet the Streets Outreach Ministry um, um, in Houston, Texas. And you're also the owner of Lead to Greatness, this mm-hmm. podcast, this mm-hmm. movement to help people become their, reach their greatest potential and become who they are. So I want to ask you some questions on what it's been like for you as a leader during COVID-19, because as we both know, and we've shared on the podcast before, when we first started this, and uh, I'm, I'm saying we now, but at first it was you starting Lead to Greatness. Uh, it was in the beginning and you were um, leaving your um corporate job to focus on ministry and focus on lead to greatness and helping people in the world. So I would like to know, and I think the lead to greatness audience would like to know what has it been like, or what has it looked like? What has leadership looked like for you in these last few months leading through leading the organization through COVID-19? Wow. Um, it's definitely, it's definitely a challenge. Um, I, I have to be honest. Um, I, I, I'm still, you know, still trying to figure out as, as, as we go, still trying to figure this thing out. Leadership has definitely, it's, it's been, it's been complicated, but it also, is, it's been, you know, where I have to, have to definitely make adjustments, uh, you know, in the yeah. leadership. I have to think of Absolutely. things different. I have to look at Absolutely. things a lot different. Things have changed and things are constantly, I mean, constantly um, changing have to always make decisions every right, day right, right. things were more stable you know this time mm-hmm. last year, last year. It was more yeah, stable it's absolutely. like okay you start a business you put the plan together and you business move plan forward and you move forward right yeah. but now now business plan is kind of you know you you can't do a six-month plan because you don't know what's going to well, happen you now you now you now face it. even though you have a business plan for all of them, ministry and lead to greatness and new direction and meet streets you have a business plan that you uh, started working on in January or October, really, of last year, but now you're having to adjust those plans daily. And both of you, you and I worked in the same sector in corporate, and uh, we've been sharing, you know, with the ministry and on calls that they often say that in our in our industry, the industry is fluid, which means that it's constantly moving and changing. And I believe that right now in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic, that's what we're experiencing, especially here in Houston. You're still, you have a business plan, but this plan has to be fluid, which means it has to flow and constantly change for the, be- the better of your people, what you're looking forward to, because your business is people. Right, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and one of the things with that uh, originally amazing, I mean, I had everything, I had everything planned out, had everything figured out. And so now I have to look at it from a different perspective now. Right. The perspective is not, you know, physically, you know, meeting with people. Right. Now it's more, 
you know, utilizing the technology we have. It's right. like, how am I able to do the same thing, accomplish the same goals, but accomplish it through, through, uh, you know, social media, through, you know, meetings like this. Yes. Or uh, yes. uh, 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 Zoom meetings. Zoom yeah. meetings is the big thing that we uh, definitely, with that we've definitely been doing uh, even in the ministry. And I, I, I think it, it's been, it's been a real interesting journey. Uh, one thing I do have to say about this journey is it, it, it has its downsides, mm -hmm. but also it has its pros as well. Uh, for example, uh, because of this, because of this uh, pandemic that we're dealing with, and now I'm paying attention more. Right. right when right. I was, I was once, you know, just kind of going through the matrix, going through the routine. Now I really have to pay attention to what's going right. on. Pay so, to every step. So, right. So that's two things I have to mm -hmm. do. I mean, you either think. Swim. or you swim yeah. you either surviving or you're thriving and mm -hmm. and i choose to do the latter right i, I, I choose to thrive and not to not survive and, and and one of the things i've I've actually been doing um i've been planning more right um, right, right our organization <laughs> even yeah. with the ministry Absolutely. our organization with the business i've been really you know meeting with people having meetings 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 yeah. because i believe because things since things slowed down it's better now ever i mean this is really an it's opportunity yeah. i mean i you know god forbid you know the situation that happened you know kobe you know but i mean i believe every situation you have a bad side and you have a good side Silver lining. you mm -hmm. you have ashes but you have beauty, beauty Absolutely. in the midst of the ashes Absolutely. let's come to the grips of it Absolutely. it is what it is it's like okay it happened now what am i going to do about it mm -hmm. am i going to sit in the corner and cry mm -hmm. and be defeated all or right. am I going to step up, turn around, put, put on my big boy pants uh -huh. and say, you know what? It is what it is. I got to get out here and start fighting. I got to right, do right, right. what I got to do. And so one of the things I, I, I realized even during this moment, it, this is a really uh, good time to, uh, to readjust. It's a time to reflect. It's a right. time to readjust. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Prior to Kobe, you know, we were living in a season where it was hard to get good people on your team. So you really think about it. Unemployment rate is high, which I mean, it's not, it's not something to, uh, to celebrate, right? but right. there is opportunity. That means you have some star players that's, that's free, free agents right yeah, now. They free. They're yeah. free. So it's like, man, <laughs> you use this moment, Absolutely. use this time. I'm not ready uh, to hire right now, right, but this is right, the thing. Right. Even if you're not ready to hire, you can still build relationships. Right, you can still right, build right. relationship with these people. Let these people know what you're doing. Tell them the vision. Tell them where you're going, where you see yourself doing COVID-19. Matter of fact, how can your business help doing COVID-19? You know, just you you know, just basically casting vision on why should you join this organization? Why should you come with me and, and get on yeah. this? You know, get on this bus and let's ride together and let's let's do some great things and let's change the world. So what you're saying is for 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 great leaders that are leading great organizations that now have this pool of other great leaders that are available because of what is what we would see as a downside, a downturn, they are now available. You're saying that now is the best time, better than ever, for us to cast vision and show these racehorse how we need them on our team. The thoroughbreds. Yeah, yeah. A lot of times all you can get is donkeys, but I mean, you got some, <laughs> you got some, you got some, some thoroughbreds. thoroughbreds out they there, got right? a little bit of time on their hand right, right now. And, they, right? and they're just waiting. I have to be honest. I mean, uh, prior to the COVID-19, I mean, we were moving so fast. Yeah. Moving, right, moving, absolutely. moving, moving, moving. So I didn't see the good talent. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I mean, even in our, uh, some of our organizations, I mean, we had some Michael Jordans right there sitting, yeah, on, the bench. sitting on the bench. You know, right. even as a leader, it's like, man, okay, where, where was I? Where was mm -hmm. I focused? But I was so focused on the uh, on the day to day thing. We, we we're living in a time right now where you have people that's unemployed that didn't get fired from their job because they was late for work. Okay. You know, so you know, you know so people you actually have talented people mm -hmm. that are laid off right now. Right. Mm -hmm. People unemployed that that's so valuable any given time these people will always have work yeah you know so they're unemployed right? and i think it's i think it's important for everyone to see themselves as a leader because like you said whether it's just if you're single and living by yourself you're still leading you're leading yourself because you're leading your life yeah. the decisions you make as a leader right now in COVID 19 rather to uh the 
stores, opening websites, having everything 50% off. If you make a decision as a leader to spend all your money because it's a sale, whatever happens in your life in the future is based on the decision that you made as the leader for yourself right now. If you make the decision to stay calm, stay home, save your funds, then whatever, yeah, whatever advancement is because of the way you're leading yourself right now. Yeah. I mean, this, this is a, I mean, just in all type of ways, even leading, you know, you asked me about, you know, leading during the COVID-19, but even mm -hmm. leading the family. Yeah. I mean, this is the best opportunity to save. I mean, it's, yes, it is. It's the best opportunity yes, to save. I, I had so many habits. I was a Starbucks junkie. I mean, I, I those that know me, I was a Starbucks junkie. Right, I was a Starbucks right. every day, every morning, single evening, day. Every day. Yes, morning, noon, every mm -hmm. Saturday, every I, every time I studied or did anything, it was at Starbucks. Starbucks was my home office. I had office all over Houston, <laughs> all over the country. When we went to Hawaii on our trip, that's right. Starbucks, Starbucks there. Yes. Everywhere we go, I, you know, I find, find a Starbucks. Starbucks. As a matter of fact, I have a little thing. I said, oh, man, I got to find my office. Got to find it. And, and, and so now, and that was a, I, I don't even know how much I was spending on Starbucks. Okay. I don't know how much the charge was, but I'm telling you, I haven't been to Starbucks since um, since March. March. Mm -hmm. That's the Utilizing longest. Utilizing the home office. Longest I've office. ever been. And you know what? Be before, I mean, we had a home office, but I wasn't using it. Right. The home office was basically just a, a decoration it was, it piece. Was a, it was a showroom. Right. It was a showroom. <laughs> People walk through, yeah, here's the office. Yeah. I mean, office that didn't. But now, not only oh, is the office, it looks like an office. Yes. It looks like an office. It's got paper everywhere. I mean, it, it definitely gets worked every day. So I had to re even relocate that. So with that being said, I'm saving money. Yeah. I'm saving money because I'm not spending money on latte. I'm not spending money on on coffee. I'm not spending money on Frappuccino. I'm mm -hmm. talking five, six, seven dollar Frappuccino. I'm not spending that type of money. And now I'm able to, you know, sit in my office yeah. and drink my water, mm -hmm. which is free. <laughs> and I can say, you know, so I mean, even leading through that, leading through the responsibility Absolutely. of saving money. Yeah. I mean, it's times, I mean, things have slowed down. I mean, I know the stores are opening now and I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope if you haven't spent your stimulus check, if you haven't spent your uh, unemployment tax, check, your unemployment, income tax, yeah. I'm telling make you, it work if you make it work, yeah. save it. Save it. No, you don't have to run. You don't have to run to the stores because the stores are open. Mm -hmm. You don't have to run there. Stay home. Absolutely. Save your money. Continue to eat at home. You was eating That's at home right. at first. Why change now? Absolutely. Now think about it. In the leading through COVID nineteen, now you develop new habits. That's it. Your habits are different. Sure I don't do. have the same habits I used to have. You know, at one point I had to stay at home. So therefore, I'm not I'm not out clubbing or spending money and 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 spending all the money on on luxury things or whatever, because here I am, I'm at home. I had no choice but to go. And now the government has given us, you know, they begin to open things up. But this, listen. Come on. This is the time. <laughs> this is the moment. Really. For you mm -hmm. to see who you really are. Yeah. Are you a real leader? Leadership. Leadership through leading through COVID-19. So... With all that we've talked about, and we, uh, you know, Lead to Greatness knows, and we've shared at the beginning of this podcast itself, you know, um, the organizations that you lead. As a leader, I'm going to just ask for one. What has been the one thing that you have focused on or tried to focus on the most during this crisis? Oh, that's a good question. How can we better serve people? Mm. And... How we can better serve people has changed since March. Yeah. When I true. originally started uh, started and launched uh, the Lead to Greatness, greatness. Mm -hmm. I had a different agenda than I have now. The agenda has shifted because now there's a different need mm -hmm. than there were uh, three months ago. Mm -hmm. The need has changed. So my focus and my main focus is right now is how can I meet the new need mm, of the yeah. people? You know, for example, normally back to school, you're thinking about backpacks, you're thinking about uh, pencils and things Paper. like this. Mm -hmm. But now even that need Maybe back different. to school is different. Why? 
should we gather and give away backpacks if kids not going back to school? Why are we still backpacks? So that's the thing. So it's like just shifting the focus on what's needed during this time. What's needed during this time? So that's 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 what that's what I mainly been shifting. doing. Just shifting towards uh, focus. So, that's important. So would you sum it up by saying that? Because what I'm hearing is that your main focus during this time has been shift what you're doing to meet the current need. Um, able to adjust swiftly. Yeah, absolutely. Really, just just really just meeting the right need. It's all about people it's all about serving people so it's like how can i better serve people when i'm really adding value to people's lives what can i do um we have a good marriage we have our finances are good um god has been amazing i mean there, there's i don't even think amazing is a good enough word for how he's blessed yeah, us and it's not, not even definitely not a um uh, what they say you have to make a disclaimer it's not bragging it's only us telling you I promise it's only us telling you the goodness of God because there's nothing in and of ourselves. And we believe that God has the same abundant life available to others as well. And so what it, what I'm hearing you say is that you don't want to be the only one benefiting. You don't want to only, be, you don't want to be the only one living better. You don't want to be the only one feasting on the good of Absolutely. the land. You don't want to be the only one that can, uh, profess before the world because we don't boast in ourselves. We boast of the Lord Absolutely. because it's because of him, but you don't want to be the only one boasting of the Lord. You want everyone that you come in contact. And that's the, that's the basis of lead to greatness for everyone that we come in contact with to be able to have the same testimony or even greater testimony. That's it. An right. even greater testimony than ours. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, I mean, even right now, even right now, I'm kind of hesitant on, even the things that's going on because I don't want it. Or you say yes. like we don't want it to sound like bragging. Yes. Right. I, yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not here to rub it in somebody's face. Yeah. No. No. I, no. I, I'm here to 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 you know to help somebody to be a blessing, be a blessing mm -hmm. to somebody, help somebody. To you know, open just someone's really mind to what is possible because possible. anything and everything is possible with God's hand, following His leading. I was going to ask you this, and I guess I kind of. A little bit said to answer myself because I think I know what it is. You're my husband, married for a long time. I was going to ask you what has been the guiding, the one thing that has been guiding you as you lead in the midst of this crisis. What is the thing that you count on to guide you in making some of the tough decisions you make? Now, what has been the guiding factor for you? What do, what is it that guides you? to make the tough decisions. Yeah. Yeah, I, I lean on my faith. I lean on what I believe in. I lean on, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit, um, you know, just moving within me. Actually, that's what I've been leaning on even before the crisis. <laughs> right. Um, I mean, long before COVID-19, I mean, that same God haven't failed me yet. Man. 20, 20, over 20 years, um, haven't failed me yet. So, I'm going to ask you this question. What piece of advice would you give a leader leading during a crisis such as this? Well, that's three things. Uh, the first thing is put people before product. Uh, Zig Ziglar had this quote. He says, people don't care how much you know until they know how, how much, much you care. Mm -hmm. And one thing, I mean, just think about this. I, I Back when I used to go fishing, that was one thing. I like Mexican, Mexican food. food. Yeah. So I like Mexican food. I love it. I mean, we eat Mexican all the time. We're about to, fact, eat, some for we about to eat some nachos uh, right after we get done with the recording. <laughs> so I love Mexican food. But back when I went fishing, I didn't give the fish tacos. Right. <laughs> I, I didn't throw a taco bait out for the fish right, because right. that's not what the fish like. Mm -hmm. The fish like something different than what I like. We have two different tastes. So here it is. If I want to bait the fish, I can't give the fish tacos. I have to give the fish, fish what, what, they what they like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the same way in business and the same thing uh, with people. You know, uh, it, it's, it's, it's putting people, putting people first, mm -hmm. making people, like. making people like. number mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. um, um, priority, Appealing making people, right. And even with the business, I mean, whatever you're doing, 
doing it according to uh, you know fitting fitting people the whole yeah. instead of your personal yeah right and it's like what I was saying earlier about um about even in the COVID nineteen mm -hmm. the shift has changed shift haven't changed in business based on what I want yeah it's based, based on, on what, what the, the people, people need. need absolutely so it's based on the needs so that's the whole that's the first thing whether you whether it's your business whether it's your personal life whether it's your marriage put the people first put, uh, the, put person the person first. before the product make mm -hmm. the person number one make the person feel special that's the big difference between ordinary people and people that just you have these people that they're just so lovable mm -hmm. i'm talking to people just everybody like them everybody like them because they think about others more than they think about themselves right, right, think right. about a selfish person all they want to do is talk about themselves they that's not the individual you want to have them. a conversation with yeah. that's not the individual yeah. you want to hang out with you no. don't want to hang out with nobody all they do is talk about themselves no. and then you know you're talking to them then now you're sharing your story and now yeah, i want to they got to one up you, you know, it's like, man, you don't want to be around people like mm -hmm. that. You know? So the, the first thing is putting people before product, putting others before yourself. The next thing you want to do is put facts before fear. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it again, put facts before fear. Mm -hmm. So be guided by, by the facts and not your fear. Right. We mm -hmm. have to focus on what's real. Absolutely. And not the stories yeah. we then created in our head. Or the stories that we're hearing because we know that in this day and time that we have media and all of it is not real news. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, I mean, just think about the uh, the, 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 the the stories we tell ourselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got stories in our head. I mean, to be honest, I mean, we got a whole entire production company going on in our head. We then created a whole movie on the way things supposed to be. Absolutely. And the truth doesn't matter, it, it may not even may turn not out even like be. that. That's yeah. an acronym about fear. It's a false evidence, evidence appearing, appearing real. real. False mm -hmm. evidence appearing real. So here it is. I mean, sometimes things is not even real. And a lot of times we stop and we don't take a chance and we don't move mm -hmm. because of something that's not even real. Uh, it's just a shadow. And we basically acting off shadows. We're not even acting off something that's tangible, something that's real. I mean, that's somebody that never started the business because of the fear, the fear of, of failing, failing. but mm -hmm. they haven't even started. You haven't even gave it a try. Yes. You haven't even gave it a try, but here you are with your gifted self, with your passionate self. I mean, you're not one of those people that Balance. just starting the See business down. because you're trying to make money. You're starting the business because you're trying to make a difference, but here you are not making that decision because you're scared to fail. But the truth of the matter is, if you're getting in it for the right reason, the greater chances are of you failing is slim to none. Yeah. Why? Because I'm doing this out of passion. Because when you're doing it for the money, one thing about business, I'll tell you this. One thing about business, a lot of times in the beginning, you're putting all the money into it. That's right. Money and if you it. have a perspective about the about money, money you're gonna quit you're gonna quit too early mm -hmm. you're gonna quit as soon as it start getting heat i'm not even talking about fire i'm talking about as soon as the kitchen start heating up you out the kitchen mm -hmm. you know so if you're doing it for passion no matter if the money is not coming in right away if i'm not getting uh instant instant return i'm not doing it for the money anyway I'm doing it because I'm doing it for the love. I'm doing it for the passion. I'm doing it because it's the it's the right thing to do. Here it is the three things: putting people before product. Number two, putting facts before fear. Third thing is being proactive and not reactive. Being proactive, and not reactive. It's because you have two types of people. You have people that react, and you have people that proact. The proactive people is the person that uh Looking get they get they all changed mm -hmm. on their vehicle that's right that's the person that get they maintenance done on, on their vehicle, their vehicle. absolutely that the reactive person is she want to change the oil when the engine is went out because <laughs> you didn't dragging. change the oil mm -hmm. right you know you want you want to fix things once things have I already uh, broke right it's broke already now you want to fix it you know that's the difference so the goal is to be proactive instead of being reactive don't right. don't be so reactive to everything be proactive put a plan in place put a system in place put a thing in place put the people in place get everything get the organization together that's three that, that's some things you can improve you can improve the organization mm -hmm. uh, you want to improve yourself 
You want to improve the people around you. You want to improve your family. You want to improve productivity. You want you want to uh, you want to improve your capital. Mm -hmm. You want to improve your credit. If mm -hmm. you know you're starting the business, I mean, get the leverage right now. Build your credit. Work mm -hmm. on your credit right now while you have the idea. Don't wait till you know you started the business. Then you want to fix your credit. Be proactive. Get it done first. Put the things in place first. Be proactive. Don't wait till you get diabetes before you decide you want to get your health together mm -hmm. get your health together right now don't wait till you have high blood pressure and then you want to get you want to start eating right start eating right right now start implementing things right now don't wait till you have problems with your kidney then you want to start drinking water start drinking water right now Amen. be proactive and do it right now mm -hmm. do it right now so those are the, those are the three things that i would i, I would tell a leader, even I know COVID-19, this thing is serious. You know, we're leading, leading, we're leading in uncertainty. So here it is, put people before product, mm -hmm. put facts before fear, mm -hmm. and be proactive and not reactive. reactive. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And those are three great tips. I, I thank you for sharing that advice. Um, and I, I, I know that this is advice that you have been sharing with us as leaders and working in the organizations that uh, we have with you, you've been definitely been doing these things and uh, putting the people first, putting, the, I mean, listening to the facts and not your fears and your worries and your concerns and not concerns, but your fears, because fears is, fear is a whole nother level from concern. Right. Concern is, okay, this could be a problem. Fear is you've already made it a problem. And Absolutely. you don't even know yet. So the, yes. the, the facts, the facts, the, the facts, the facts, the facts. Um, we want to, you know, get get the facts for what we know, what the situation really is. We know that we're de we're in a situation that no one has ever dealt with before, not anyone that's alive. I mean, there's been uh pandemics, I'm sure or they maybe they called it ago. something else years ago. You had different things that happened and all those people are dead and gone. But you know, there were people that survived that. And there are people, and we, plenty of us, will survive this. And we want to lead well, even in the midst of this. Because the one thing that I was thinking about is that you're going to have two type of organizations at the end of COVID-19 when it comes to an end or when they've gotten it under control or they come up with a, a vaccination or whatever, whatever it is, if it just disappears, whatever. At the end of it, we're going to have two types of organizations, whether it's a corporate organization, a ministry, an right. outreach, whatever it is, you're going to have two types of organizations. The first organization is going to be one that was managed, and they may not be resilient. They may close. They may end. That business is gone. Yeah. Then you're going to have the second corporation or the second type of organization where it's going to be, they're going to flourish. They're going to come out on the other side better than before. Even if they down, if they, even if they don't have uh, multiple buildings, they're selling more product. Their people are, um, the people are more engaged. Their team is more cohesive. For us, we've been talking about the team. I mean, we're we're definitely planning to come out better than we went in COVID nineteen because planning. we're, we're working. Yeah, I'm, I'm no. I'm oh, when I say planning, I, I say planning because we're still in the midst of it. Yeah, but absolutely. we're we're doing all of our leaders, all of our ministry leaders. We're meeting with them. We're doing the work. All of our volunteers for the nonprofit. We're meeting with them. Yeah. We're doing the work. We're investing in the people. We're investing time and casting vision and sharing and training and doing all this via Zoom, so that when when all of this is over, the people are better than they were when we went in. Not just us. Not just the organization. The people. So you're gonna have two types of organizations. You're gonna have those that are not resilient. And they're gonna go. They're gonna disappear. And then you're. And I say they were managed because managed means you just do what needs to, you know, be done at the moment. That's more reactive. When something goes wrong, then you worry about fixing it. But then you're gonna have those organizations that were led well, and they're gonna flourish. And and we encourage lead to greatness wants to encourage 
every leader who is leading in the midst of COVID-19 or any crisis, yes. if we focus on the people first, we pay attention to the facts and not our fears and whatever stories we've created. And if we are proactive, mean when you see something that could be a problem, you already start working on a solution instead of waiting till the problem happens and then do something. If we, if we are proactive in our leadership, yeah. then we can be the corporation that is flourishing. We could be the organization that comes out better than we were when we went into the crisis. Absolutely. I'm reminded of an analogy I heard in a sermon or something like that. They talk about a Coke can. If you take a Coke can and you shake it up, that's the crisis. The crisis comes and it shakes you up. Mm. But when you pop the top, what's in there is going to splurt out. Mm. So what you want to do is you want to work on what's in the can so that when it comes out, it's something good. Cause it's going to come out yeah. once you pop the top, the pressure is going to make it come yeah. out. Yeah. So the pressure of COVID-19 is making a lot of things come out. Yeah. And as good leaders, we want it to be good coming out. We want it to be positioning our organizations to be better. We want it to be positioning our people and helping our people to be better. We want it to be that our organizations are stronger when we come out of this than we, when we went in it. Yeah. And and that is the focus for Eat to Greatness and the podcast for today. Yes. Every organization, every individual, you should be better than you were. Mm -hmm. Going coming Absolutely. out than you were when you went in. Um, and, and I really believe in, I speak that, you know, over each and every one of your life, you know, just be successful. Absolutely. You know, it's not over. I know this thing is real, but, you know, uh, you know, just get up, start running. Um, and, and start moving, you know, just making things happen. Uh, once again, I want to thank uh, Leach Greatness Nation for joining us and looking forward to seeing you again on next week. Until then, if you help others reach their greatest potential, together, together we, can we can change, change the, the world. world. Peace.